Hello everyone, my name is Scott Wallach. I'm the Assistant Program Director for the Neonatal Perinatal Fellowship Program at the Medical College of Wisconsin in Children's Wisconsin. Thank you for your interest in our fellowship program. During the pandemic, it's unfortunate we won't be able to have you visit and interview here at Children's for your fellowship. I wanted to share this presentation with you to give you an idea about our fellowship program. So you've completed your undergraduate work, your medical school, and you're probably finishing your residency training. You're now getting ready for your NICU fellowship. You've finally made it. Our fellowship started in 1971 at the Milwaukee County Hospital. Now near, nearly 50 years later, we are still going strong. We have nine fellows at our 70 bed NICU, which is the largest NICU in Wisconsin. Our freestanding children's hospital allows our fellows to have rotations not only in our NICU, but in the newborn nursery, cardiac ICU, and maternal fetal medicine. We are the main referral hospital for the majority of Wisconsin, Upper Michigan, and even parts of Northern Illinois. Our catchment area reaches about seven to eight million people. Imagine if New York City had one referral NICU. That is what we can offer our fellows. In addition, we have many well-established subspecialties that draw patients and families from all over the country. Our fetal concern center has grown in the last few years and is a major draw for families with high risk and complicated pregnancies. The clinical experience you'll get at Children's Wisconsin will prepare you to be an outstanding clinician. Our neonatology faculty are well prepared to provide excellent training for our fellows. We have 19 full-time faculty in neonatology. We also have three full-time faculty who provide coverage in our newborn nursery. Our faculty have a diverse background in both training programs and experience, ranging from full professors to the newly graduated. In 2016, we were able to upgrade our NICU to a state-of-the-art 70-bed unit. Each patient room is a single patient room and provides the ability for parents to stay in their baby's room 24-7. We have direct access to labor and delivery, which is only 100 yards away. The unit also has special rooms for twins, triplets, and even quadruplets. We have our own simulation lab in the NICU, providing excellent learning opportunities for our fellows. There's also a room for bereavement and comfort care for infants and families in palliative care cases. Now onto the program itself. Our three-year curriculum is divided into 12 and a half months of clinical service, 21 months of research, and nine weeks of vacation. This is our clinical service curriculum. During your first year, you will do five months of NICU service and one half month in a newborn nursery. Now our newborn nursery also functions like a level two unit. They can take babies as low as 34 weeks on oxygen, monitors, and antibiotics. So your NICU patients are really intensive care patients. We've intentionally limited you to five months of service in your first year. This allows incoming fellows to prepare, study, and pass their pediatric boards, and also to get a start on the research project. During your second year, you'll do three months of NICU service, one half month in our maternal fetal medicine, and one half month in our cardiac ICU. We have one of the busiest cardiac surgery centers in the country, and you'll have the unique experience to care for post-operative infants with congenital heart disease. In your third year, you'll have three more months of NICU service. Our patient population will prepare you for your career in neonatology. Of course, we have many premature infants that are delivered at our delivery hospital, Freighter Memorial Lutheran Hospital. Our delivery numbers have increased annually over the past decade, and we anticipate that we'll have over 4,000 deliveries this year. We are also the main referral hospital for most of Wisconsin. Our hospital offers pediatric subspecialty services. You'll be able to care for infants with a variety of unique conditions. This includes general surgery cases, including TE fistulas, abdominal wall defects, and diaphragmatic hernias. We also have infants with many other surgical needs and work with our colleagues in urology, orthopedics, and neurosurgery. We care for many infants with both common and rare genetic differences. And as a level four NICU, we often have babies transferred to us that have complex needs and require the highest level of intensive care. Here you'll see our typical day on service in the NICU. While we've made some modifications to this with the COVID-19 pandemic, we will return to this once we're able to. We have three teams that are based upon geography, A, B, and C. We don't have special areas for special diseases or ages, so you'll have a wide variety of patients and pathology on your team. The A and B teams are led by a fellow every day. You'll have a few pediatric residents and one neonatal nurse practitioner with you. The C team is staffed by an attending and three NNPs. Second and third year fellows will do two to three months of service on the C team, preparing them to round collaboratively with neonatal nurse practitioners. You'll arrive at 7 a.m. for sign out and pre-round from seven to about 8.25. Then you'll huddle with all the teams, charge nurses, and discharge planning to cover the 
planned events of the day, including admits, discharges, and procedures. At 8.30, we review our radiologic studies with a staff radiologist. The staff and attending radiologist comes to the NICU and will review all the images with us, providing a unique opportunity to learn from our imaging colleagues. You'll round from about 9 to 11 a.m. After finishing a few tasks from 11 to 12, you'll have noon conference from 12 to 1. After that, you'll continue to provide care for your patient until sign out at 4. Fellows are out the door and on their way home by 5 o'clock. Of course, you'll have some calls during your training. All of our calls are in-house. You'll always be on call with an in-house faculty member, two neonatal nurse practitioners, and one to two pediatric residents. We want to keep our rounding fellows available every day during the week, so we won't have you do calls during the week. Weekday calls are covered by the fellows on research. We also want to make sure you get the most out of your maternal fetal medicine and CICU rotations, so we won't have you take weekday calls with these rotations. For our incoming fellows, we have them take a buddy call with one of our senior fellows for the first month to get used to the hospital and the system. If you're on service, you'll do every other Saturday call, ensuring that you get at least four full calendar days off per month. Fellows also don't round post calls so they can keep a good work-life balance. If you're the fellow on C-Team, you may do three Friday night calls, but we'll still make sure you get your four, at least four full days off per rotation. Our expectations for your research can be seen here. The first few months are designed to identify your mentor. Now, once we've been lucky enough to have matched you, I'll probably contact you right after that to see your research interests and try to get some groundwork started on your scholarly project. We're usually so excited for our new fellows that I'm not going to wait until July to start working with you. Once you have your mentor, you'll spend the remainder of your first year getting your study together. This includes IRB or animal protocol submissions. In your second or third year, you'll be getting all of your data and start analyzing your findings. In the third year, you'll be expected to finish your data analysis and write up your work product. After that, it's time for your graduation. You'll have many opportunities for learning outside of the patient care realm. All of our fellows attend our developmental follow-up clinic, which is on site. The American Board of Pediatrics expects each fellow to attend about 23 clinics during their three years. This gives you a great opportunity to see some of your former patients. We also have a solid educational curriculum for our fellow. Each lecture occurs from 12 to 1 in a conference room that's located inside the NICU. Mondays are our board review days. The review is led by fellows with a faculty mentor. Topics are assigned based upon the board exam. The fellows get a set of board prep questions for each section and then review them together. Tuesdays are our main academic conferences. We have a, a wide variety of lectures that occur monthly. These include our faculty-led evidence-based medicine reviews, fellow and faculty-led journal clubs, our own morbidity and mortality conferences, and a combined maternal fetal MFM, MNM. The MFM MNM is led by fellows from both the NICU and MFM fellowships, and they pick a case that has learning points for both subspecialties. Wednesdays are the days we have fellows gift lectures. They rotate between your physiology and case conferences. Each fellow gets about two to three different physiology lectures per year, and topics again are based upon the board exams. Case conferences are an informal discussion led by the on-service fellow of an interesting case, an ethical dilemma, or a challenging diagnosis. Faculty and fellows attend both the Tuesday and Wednesday conferences. Thursdays are the special fellow lectures. The first half of the year is our back to basics talk. Faculty present common NICU diagnosis and conditions and will present them at the level of the incoming fellows. The second half of the year is our evidence-based discussions. Fellows choose outside speakers to come, provide, come and provide a lecture for them. This is only for the fellows, so you get the opportunity to speak with one of our subspecialty colleagues directly. Topics in the past have included general surgery, trach vent, and pulmonology. We also have many other educational opportunities. As a large fellowship, a large hospital with many fellowships, we realize that many of our programs have topics that we'd all like to cover together. This includes writing an abstract, quality improvement, and how to look for a job. Rather than have each section try to find a speaker, we have all fellows from all sections learn from one outstanding expert. This is called our joint curriculum. This year, you'll have one day in the fall and one day in the spring to participate. Although Dr. Kunduri, our program director and section chief, has many research and administrative responsibilities, your education is still very important to him. He'll meet with the fellows as a group once a month to discuss your research project. It's an informal way to get advice and learn from one of the world's experts in neonatal research and pulmonary hypertension. We have many patients that have both surgical and neonatal needs and collaborate with our surgeons on a daily basis. Because there's always something we can learn from each other, we have a combined neonatal surgery conference. This occurs quarterly and rotates between surgery and neonatal presenters. 
It's a great opportunity to learn about our neonatal surgical issues and attended by faculty and fellows from both neonatology and pediatric surgery. With our busy fetal concern center, we have many moms who have complex cases. We have our fetal concerns conferences every Wednesday morning. It's attended by NICU, maternal fetal medicine, cardiology, surgery, genetics, radiology, and many other subspecialists. We discuss new cases, changes in findings, and upcoming deliveries. It's a very unique learning experience for our fellows to hear the multidisciplinary conference, and it's certainly one of the favorite conferences for our fellows. Simulation is also an important part of your learning. We have mock codes on a regular basis in our NICU sim lab. We're also hoping to start multidisciplinary mock codes that will involve faculty, fellows, nurses, respiratory therapists, and pharmacists. The pandemic put a little bit of a challenge with that plan, but we're hoping to get that going soon. We also have our monthly fellow meetings where I'll meet with you guys to discuss items related to our fellowship. One of the biggest strengths, as I mentioned, of our program is our fetal concern center. The team is made up of maternal fetal medicine, neonatology, and our PEDS subspecialists. It's led by Dr. Steve Leitner, one of the world's leaders in fetal and neonatal bioethics. Families are referred to us from throughout the region when they have a pregnancy complicated by maternal illness, congenital anomalies, or difficult pregnancy. The Fetal Concern Center meets with families prenatally in the outpatient setting, and families will meet all of their consultants in one clinic visit. As a fellow, you'll be able to spend at least 10 half days in the clinic, um, and many choose to spend even more time there. You'll be matched with a patient and then participate in the entire consult, listening to consultants from MFM, NICU, and subspecialists. It's a very unique opportunity for our fellows to learn from the experts at Children's. You get to observe and participate in challenging cases that will prepare you to provide excellent consultation skills as a neonatologist. As the major referral center in the area, we have a lot of patients who require medical transportation from an outside hospital. Children's has a dedicated transport service and all transports have a nurse and respiratory therapist. However, we often need your expertise as a fellow to assist on those transports. Fellows are able to go on transports to pick up sick infants throughout the state, northern Michigan, and northern Illinois. We offer transport by ambulance, helicopter, and even fixed wing. It's a great experience for our fellows. They really get to learn independent practice and communication while being the leader of the transport team in the field. Our fellowship has many ways we support our fellows. Every year, fellows receive academic development funds. This can be used to offset the cost of your pediatric boards, buy books, or attend conferences. We also wanna make sure you have the ability to show off your successful research projects. So we make sure that you have one week of educational leave to attend conferences. We know that the PAS SPR conference is one of the best conferences that a young neonatology fellow can attend and present at. We think it's so important that our Department of Pediatrics has provided travel grants to fellows to reduce the financial strain of attending conferences. You'll have time to get together as a group outside of the hospital too. In the spring, all fellows have their retreat. It's the only night of the year that a faculty member does call without a fellow, but we do want you to enjoy your time as a group. You'll also get to attend the holiday gathering in December, taking part in a nice dinner and holiday festivities. And we have our graduation dinner at the end of the year at a real fancy restaurant to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduating fellows. I also want to point out that our program is very family friendly. We know how important it is to have a baby as neonatologists. Our program has had many families, fellows start or add on to their families during training without drastically changing the, the three-year plan. With nine fellows in our program, it allows fellows to take the time off to enjoy the new infant without putting extra calls or service on their co-fellows. As you can see from these pictures, our fellows do have a lot of fun. Our program strives to have a cohesive group of fellows and many develop lifelong friendships. We encourage and foster camaraderie amongst our group by providing many opportunities for gatherings, both in and out of the hospital. We really do strive to maintain a good work-life balance for our fellows so they can enjoy their training and their free time. The medical college is one of the largest in the country and providing, providing not only medical student training, but also degrees related to healthcare. Many of our fellows have taken the opportunity to take classes or even get advanced degrees during their training. Some of our current and recently graduated fellows have obtained degrees in bioethics and clinical and translational sciences. There are also opportunities to get degrees in public health and a wide variety of basic sciences. We know that this training will help prepare our graduates for a career in academic medicine. The Department of Pediatrics has often provided financial support for fellows who obtain these degrees. Of course, the amount of support varies on the budget, and I can't promise anything, but we certainly hope to provide support for our fellows to get these degrees. 
Now, if we were meeting in person, I know one of the questions you'd ask me is how the fellowship has changed over the past few years. I can certainly say we have made a lot of great improvements in our training program. I've been the associate program director of the fellowship since 2016, and my main goal is to prepare our fellows to be the best neonatologists they can be. We are a very responsive program. I seek feedback from my fellows through formal and informal surveys, both face-to-face -face and anonymously, and we made a lot of improvements based upon their input. One such change is a board review. We started a board review series last year based upon the fellow feedback. We also began participating in a regional boot camp for the incoming fellows. This year it was done remotely, but we were still able to have them participate. We also changed our MFM rotation a lot. With the opening of our fetal concern center, we changed from an entirely outpatient experience to a combined experience. Now fellows have some time in the MFM clinic. We'll also do some inpatient service and the fetal concern center. One of our previous chief fellows had an interest in prenatal counseling education, and we worked together to create an outstanding perinatal counseling curriculum. This curriculum consists of lectures by our faculty on the art and science of prenatal counseling, and it also includes a simulated prenatal counseling experience. This allows our fellows to practice their counseling skills while being observed and trained by our faculty. And over the past three years, our faculty have done wonderful, obtaining many, many NIH grants, including four R01 grants, three K awards, and one R21. This shows that our faculty are not only excellent at research, but also guarantees the opportunity and funding for fellows to be successful in their own scholarly activity. We have never and will never make our fellows obtain funding for their own research. I wanna introduce you to some of the leaders of our faculty. Dr. Ganesh Kanduri is the Fellowship Program Director and Section Chief of the Neonatal Division of Neonatology. He is world renowned in pulmonary vascular biology and PPHF. He's received multiple NIH grants and has mentored many fellows to successful academic careers. Dr. Jess Seeger is the Associate Chair of the Department of Pediatrics. Dr. Seeger has been NIH funded in renal and sodium physiology and has been successful as both a basic and clinical researcher. Dr. Seeger is also an excellent teacher at the bedside in our lectures and a mentor for all of our fellows. Dr. Jan Joanne Legata is our K23 funded researcher who studies healthcare utilization and parent quality of life in infants with BPD. She has also mentored several fellows in their clinical research projects and her mentees consistently present at many outstanding conferences. Dr. Hang Niam Rao is our K08 funded researcher who studies TPN related liver disease. Her studies focus on translational science. She has also an excellent track record in mentoring fellows in clinical and translational research projects. Dr. Steve Leutner is the medical director for the NICU part of the Fetal Concerns Clinic. He's internationally known for his work in fetal and neonatal ethics and palliative care. Dr. Leutner provides outstanding mentoring to his fellows in research and is very active in teaching our fellows. Dr. James Affelion recently received his K08 grant for work in studying mitochondrial redox during the adaptation of pulmonary circulation at birth. Dr. Affelion has an active bench research lab and has met, mentored many fellows in their basic science scholarly activities. You'll certainly spend a lot of time on your scholarly project. Our hope and our expectation is that it'll be the first step in a successful academic career. We expect our fellows to have completed a first author work product that's worthy of submission to a journal. Since starting this expectation four years ago, all of our graduates have met this requirement, and nearly all of them have had their research accepted in publications in outstanding journals. Our fellows do have a long list of prestigious accomplishments during their training. Nearly every fellow has had a first author presentation at the Pediatric Academic Society, and several have presented in both their second and third years of training. They have multiple first author manuscripts that have been published. Our fellows have also presented at local conferences, including the Wisconsin Association for Perinatal Care, the, and then national conferences, including the Academy of American Academy of Pediatrics, the Midwest Society for Peace Research, and many other large conferences. Several fellows have won awards at the PAS and AAP conferences based on their presentation. Fellows have also been recognized for their teaching skills, receiving awards from the NCW Pediatrics Program for their outstanding teaching. Several, several of our fellows have obtained master's degrees from NCW in bioethics, education, and clinical and translational research. And our fellows are always competitive in the local MCW affiliated House Staff Research Day Awards. Our fellows have been quite successful in their careers after graduation. Here's a map of the location that our fellows have taken jobs. While many do choose to stay locally, 
A lot have traveled throughout the nation. Our graduates are highly sought after and highly recruited. In the past 10 years, 60% of our graduates have gone into an academic setting. Milwaukee is an absolutely wonderful place to live. I'm gonna guess that many of you haven't had the opportunity to visit our great city and maybe even haven't, having heard much about it. Now, I've lived here almost my entire adult life and I can definitely say it's a great place to live, work, and raise a family. So what's life like in Milwaukee? Well, the first thought that comes to everyone's mind is that it's cold. It is not that cold, trust me. We actually have the same average temperature as New York, Chicago, and Denver. We do get a decent amount of snow, but it's a lot less because of the lake. And our city and our state knows how to handle it, so driving isn't a problem. Milwaukee is gonna be among the most affordable places on your rank list. The salary provided is very good. And when matched with the relatively low standard of living, you'll find that your dollar goes a lot farther than other places. Parking here is free. There's no charge for parking at the hospital. You'll be able to park in a detached garage for no charge. You also have a lot of great choices of where you want to live. The hospital is actually in a suburb of Milwaukee. You can literally live within biking or distance, walking or biking distance to work, which I actually did as a fellow. Several of our fellows live in downtown Milwaukee, which is an exciting and a vibrant place to be. Some of our fellows also choose to live in the suburbs west of the hospital, where there are excellent public and private school options. With your salary and the standard of pay, you'll actually have a lot of choices, including renting, leasing, or even buying a house. There are a lot of fun things to do in Milwaukee. Here's some pictures provided by the fellows and myself. You'll see we have a lot of lake activities on beautiful Lake Michigan, outdoor activities like ultimate frisbee and cross country skiing, indoor fun such as rock climbing and curling, and we have our professional sports teams. If you're a sports person, you can easily take in a Bucks or Brewers game where you'll actually get to see a couple of MVPs play. We also have historic Lambeau Field and the Green Bay Packers just a short drive up north. There are a lot more fun things to do in the city. The Milwaukee County Zoo is one of the best in the country. Don't forget to check out the family of albino giraffes. They also have a very new elephant exhibit. The domes are home to an entire acre of indoor plant exhibits. We have a lot of great restaurants and eating places, including our fair share of homemade ice cream parlors, such as the Purple Door. The Milwaukee Art Museum in the lower left is home to the best of the state's art displays with internationally renowned exhibits. And of course, the city and state is well known for its beer, so there's a lot of breweries and restaurants that you're able to take in. Thank you for your interest in our program. We are very excited about the upcoming season. We know it'll be a lot different than in the past, but we're ready and excited and prepared. As with all of our pro programs, our interview will be virtual lead season. Now, if you have more questions, want to get in touch, feel free to send me an email at swelak at mcw.edu. I would love to hear from you. For more inf information about our program, including interviews of some of our faculty members, please click on the link below. We wish you the best during your interview season, and I hope to hear from you soon.